Alrighty, what's going on guys? Edward here back with another video. It's been a minute since I posted my last one. I actually posted a few shorts. I'm trying to get into the whole social media thing. I, I suck. I have to admit that creating content for Instagram, even TikTok and, and, and YouTube shorts. Oh boy, that's that's a lot of work. And uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually trying to get on that. So if you want to show some love and probably follow me in, um, you know, all my social media, just make sure to go in the description below. You see my Instagram, um, even my free Telegram. Uh, I do post some some analysis and some ideas in there um, uh, on a daily basis. I try to keep updating in there. And uh, I want to show you right here something uh uh, I took today, Friday, uh, on NASDAQ. Um, I want to show you here, by the way, just right quick. Just trying to be transparent here and not hiding anything. And uh, this is what I do with my team. I do have a VIP group uh, with my students. Um, I don't sell signals, okay? This is not signals that I'm selling right here or trying to tell my students, hey, just go ahead and buy here. No. I always explain my students what I'm doing and they know what to do if they do take action or not. Uh, my idea here is to teach. I am a mentor. I don't sell signals. So if you want to join my program, if you want to be part of my team, you want to see how I trade because I do trade live with my team every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on Zoom. So if you want to be part of that, just make sure to check my website. There is actually a, a bundle right now. It's, a, it's an entire program to get my course plus access do uh, a, a lot of things you know my entire course i teach smc i teach ict all the strategies uh, based on even retail traders uh retail trading everything works guys everything works there's no holy grail there's no one strategy that works better than the other one is perspective at the end of the day and it's the trader who can make a strategy really work or not period okay ICT is not the best. I do trade the concepts right now, but I can tell you it is not the best. Okay. I like it for me. I know a lot of traders don't like it, so it's, it's all right. Okay. It doesn't have to like, it. For, uh, you know, not everybody has to like it. So anyways, just going straight here. I want to show you uh, some transparency here. These are my wigs. Uh, some pretty bad weeks, some good ones. I normally make around $1,000 uh, close on a weekly. I want you also to see something very interesting. You see this week, for example, the one where, where we had the CPI. You know, it's important to keep track of everything, you know, so you remember, oh, holy shit, every time CPI report comes out, I probably I won't trade, you know, something like that. You can say, you know, <laughs> this past CPI week sucked, so... I highlight that thing so I won't forget. But anyways, take a look, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So about 12 trades I took this week, completely rate, minus $542. And you can see probably one of my best weeks, which this one was beautiful. I made $3,000 and I literally take, I took one trade a day. One, just one trade a day. So not because you're making more trades, it means more money. Nope. As, you know, personal experience, that's 100% bullshit. That's not true. You know, in trading less, to me, less is actually more. I've seen this. I, you know, less is definitely more. You know, um, sometimes I just limit myself. If I can take only one trade a day, one beautiful A plus setup a day, I am walking out. That's it. You know, you really don't need to be sticking, uh, you know, staying on the charts and keep looking. Oh, I, I caught a beautiful $1,000 trade. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going because I know I can catch another one. And that's not true, man. The next one could be a loss. And and then it's going to kill your your, you know, your your trade, whatever setup you had. Let's see how was this this entry. Look how nicely it was a beautiful unicorn right here. So walk away. You know, that's the hardest thing. As a trader, that's the most difficult thing. And that's what I'm trying to teach here on my students. So anyways, today, uh, very important. I want to go straight forward here. I don't want to make this video too long. I just 
feel like I'm talking already too much. So anyways, uh, this, this week, again, we had FOMC and Jerome Powell uh, spoke on Wednesday. Things got a little nasty there. I was trying to go easy this week because I, I had a, you know, the past CPI week you saw there, right? And I got messed up. So I, I, I was trying to go easy this week and uh, uh, that's what happened. Now, let me show you, of course, what happened today. Now, based on this Thursday candle, right? It closed strongly bullish, right? We, we actually skyrocket in this push was actually happening during Asian session and ended up breaking the high, it closed above the high. Now, I want you guys to see something. Once that candle closed like that, I am bullish. For today, my bias is actually bullish. I wanna see this high get taken, you know? I wanna target. That's That was my bias for today. I wanted to target that high. However, how come I, I actually went on sales? Well. Here's the thing. Right here, New York session. Right before, I'm going to bring you here before the actual session. Open. What time was this? 7.30. Okay, so this was still London session. So I, I sent this picture to my team this morning. Hang on. Uh-huh. So I sent this picture to my team. This is what I kind of wanted to see. I, I had a nice four-hour fair value gap right here at a weekly opening gap that we were trading sort of in the middle. This is a daily opening gap, this blue line right here, and this is a weekly opening gap. So I kind of wanted to see price go low, tap this area, and then somewhere here at 930, I want to target this size. That's a beautiful magnet right there. So when I send that, it turns out that, well, price ended up, I don't know, it started pushing. All of a sudden, it started with, you know, having a, a lot of momentum here to the upside. And it sucked that the price went straight to the target, one of my favorite targets for the day. It went straight up right here and without, you know. Uh, it was New York. It was still actually New York session right here. This is 8 a.m. So it was it was pushing up. However, it was not 930. I'm trying to make entries now after 930. I'm not going to do any type of entries before 930. It's a, it's a rule that I started implementing because I was messing up a lot of setups and a lot of trades were going wrong before 930. So I decided to stick to 930 only. So it's it's been working out. So anyways, price was taking this high. When the price takes that high, it sort of messes up with my bias. You know, it messes up with my bias. But why? Because I wanted to see price actually go towards this four hour fair value gap that I marked up here. Right. And instead, price went straight to mark to my zone. So now I'm thinking, boy, we're probably going to have sales then and I can maybe target I can maybe target that four hour fair value gap right there. I can probably target that since, you know, we recently swept. We recently took external liquidity, right? So we're probably going to go back to internal liquidity. So external back to internal. So anyways, I was watching. Then in this area. Right here. The price tapped and actually had a beautiful drop. And that drop had a macro formation right here. Sweep. It was an actually nice sell. I, I was actually sending this formation, by the way, as, as it was happening. But I didn't get in. I was in this, this, this macro. Two, two beautiful sell opportunities here. But I did not take them. I was telling my team, guys, it's not my hour. It's not the hour that I normally trade. So... I'm, I'm going to just let it go, whatever, okay? So price dropped. What time was this? 9.10. Uh, 9, so, all right. We were about to open. There we go. So stock exchange opens. And then, oh, something I forgot to mention. 
this is something I also told my team. Guys, you see this nice sweep right here, displacement up. We had a change in the state of delivery on the 15 minute time frame right here. And the price actually topped it. So this was a change, change in the state of delivery. We also had a breaker right there. And we also had a fair value gap on top of the breaker. So this was actually a unicorn pattern. But I didn't want it to take it. I knew, you know, when the price is guys rocket directly to my target, I just, I'm not, I'm no longer paying attention to this, to this zone. I'm no longer paying attention. For as much as I'm bullish, you know, my bias was bullish, but I'm not taking that. I'm not taking it because price, first of all, went straight up directly to one of my favorite targets, one of the targets that I had in mind, right? If that is being taken, it makes no sense for this to, to still be valid. Price did pull back though and tap it and freaking go to this high. So it did complete at least the swing move. That move was completed right there. So like surprisingly, it, it did it freaking work, but I did not take the buy. I just let that one go. I understood that was a change in the state of delivery, uh, but I let it, I let it go. So after that, what happened? You see that S&P price actually formed. I was spotting, I was looking S&P 500 and the market actually formed S&T right there. You can see that when the price takes that high and it forms SMT, there is an entry model, right, right here. Price created this bullish fair value gap. So I am waiting after the price took that liquidity. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, look at the time. This is 930. Okay. They're important. There's always a time. This is key. And ICT concepts is key. Timing is so freaking important. 9.30 opens, I'm waiting for that manipulation. I told my team, I'm waiting for the manipulation from 9.30. So 9.30 opens, boom, takes that manipulation, takes that high, and then forms SMT with SMP 500. And then I'm ready to wait. I'm waiting for a candle now to close below that bullish fair value gap, right? So start to struggle right there. There's no closure. I'm looking for a candle to close at least below consequent encroachment for me to this be to, to be valid okay so if i want to take an aggressive sell i need to wait for a body of a candle closing below consequent encroachment below the midpoint of this bullish fair value gap if it closes below then i have my inversion fair value gap and i'm trying to trade that inversion fair value gap so when that candle closed right there as soon as it closed the next one started to form and it was already pushing up so i was already entering in that trade Price went up, cried crazy. I was actually placing my stop loss above this high and almost stopped me right there, but it was still holding. You can see the price, that, that inversion for volley gap is still holding the price. We're not getting any closure above. So what happens after that? We had a displacement. Beautiful move to the downside, taking this low. I was closing partial profits. Then price accumulated a little bit there. It built it up this nice bearish fair value gap when the price was stopping and rejecting it i was making a second position right there and from there well pretty much played around it did struggle right here after taking this low it struggled a lot but it did end up actually even going lower as you saw but this is it this was all i was looking for this is all i was looking for you see that i was actually bullish at first in the first place i was actually bullish i wanted to buy but the market did not do what I wanted to do, which, what was it? This is what I wanted to see, right? This is what I sent to my team. I wanted to see this. I wanted to see the price, instead of pushing up first, I wanted to see the price go low first and then push. But it did the opposite. It went up, took this high. So when it sweeps and it goes up first, then I have to change my mind. I'm switching and I'm thinking, okay, well, probably price is not going to go up. What is happening here is just taking that liquidity and the manipulation, it's happening to the upside. So it's inducing people to buy when in reality, prices still needs to pull back. It's still, it's in the pullback. What pullback? Well, from this, from this impulse, let me, let me bring it up on higher time frame. You see, after this big ass push, 
it's pulling back. Where the price is right now. Look, price pulled back. If I use the Fibonacci, it went to discount. I'm gonna lose the I'm gonna use the Fib from the low to the high. And you can see price went exactly to equilibrium right here and tapping this four hour fair value gap. Once it tapped, you can also see there was an entry formation. I did not take it, but we could have entered in this inversion fair value gap. That candle, once the price taps equilibrium, four hour fair value gap, SMT. You see that last bearish fair value gap, when this candle closes above the consequent encroachment, the 50%, that, that is where the entry would have been. Entry right there, stop loss below, and then probably, probably targeting this ice. And that's where price went to. You know, it would have been a trade like this. I spotted this later, but I just, I didn't take it. I didn't take this entry. It would have been something like this, like that. So that would have been a beautiful setup. Okay. I'm sure we're probably going to go bullish. Markets is strongly bullish. And S&P has been creating actually new record highs. Uh, US 30 as well. Uh, Bitcoin right now is at 62. So everything is flying right now. So anyways, I hope it makes sense, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking your time. I appreciate your time. And if you want to show some love, all you have to do is just give it a thumbs up. It motivates me to keep posting content for you guys right here. If you want to be part of my team, just make sure to check my website, teamprofitsfx.com. The link is also in the description in case you want to see it there. And then uh, also follow me on my social, Instagram. I'll probably post my TikTok in there. I, I'm just trying to work on social. I'm not that strong on social media. So getting, getting, getting in there. So thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.